All right, friends, I'm gonna tell the truth about full self-driving on Teslas. I've been a Tesla owner since 2019 when Elon really first started hyping up the software and that new car owners are gonna be able to add their Tesla to the Tesla network and it'll be able to drive around as a robo taxi. I bought into that in 2019. I bought a Model 3 thinking that in a few years I'd be uh, able to add it to the Tesla robot taxi network. That didn't happen. Obviously, it's now 2024. I have a Model Y, which also has full self-driving on it. And let me tell you guys, full self-driving, in my experience, for me, it sucks. You can't sleep. You can't eat. You can't look at your phone. It's like you just have to babysit the Tesla while it learns to drive. And you have to take over when it's about to crash. So... Let me tell you, last week I was on autopilot on the highway, which by the way, autopilot is different than full self-driving, right? But the, the difference being autopilot just keeps you in the lane on the highway, full self-driving is gonna take turns and stuff. So I'm on autopilot on the highway, sun peeks out from behind the clouds. I look up, boom, the Tesla hits a piece of metal in the road. I get a flat tire, I pulled over, it sucks. I had to spend, you know, 200 bucks on a tow and then $400 on a tire. By the way, they wanted $1,600 to buy four new tires. So the tread are the same depth. Let me tell you guys, you can buy a custom tire from Tire Rack where they shave it down to be the same tread depth. So instead of paying 1600, I just paid 400. So the point being that the car does not know pieces of metal in the road and it's not going to be dodging that to avoid flat tires. It does not recognize potholes in the road, guys. So you have to take these things into consideration. It's not a good driver. It has to stop at every single stop sign, or like come to a complete stop, right? So it's slow, it's, it's sketchy, it hits potholes, it hits pieces, and you have to supervise it the whole time. You can't go on your phone, you can't do anything else, or else it beeps at you and then it'll put you in jail. It'll suspend you. It'll say like three strikes, you're out. You don't get to use it for a week. So this is crazy. Um, and they want you to pay to do that. So Elon's been hyping it up for years. He's, he's was just hyping it up on the Tesla annual shareholders meeting saying, oh, there's like no interventions anymore. Let me tell you guys, there's interventions. There's definitely interventions. I have new the new version, full self-driving 12. I try it out. And it drives, it creeps into the intersection to see if a car's coming, and then it stops in the intersection. And then I look like a retard. So I have to take over and drive through the intersection. It's honestly embarrassing. So the entire value of this program that they're creating is the robot taxi. It's, you know, if you're in your car supervising, you may as well just drive the car. But once they get it to the point where Nobody needs to supervise it. You don't need somebody in the driver's seat and it can drive around, give people rides that don't own the car. That's tremendously valuable. However, it's to be determined still how long it takes to get there. Not only does it need to be safe and reliable, no interventions, it needs to be approved by regulators, right? So each municipality is gonna need to have uh, regulations and a test and a board and they're gonna to have to check all the boxes in many, many cities. They're doing the robot taxi unveil uh, August 8th. They're calling it Cyber Cab, which indicates that it's gonna look uh, as retarded as the Cybertruck does. And honestly, if it looks like that, the stock price is gonna go down because people just do not want vehicles that look like that. I mean, not everybody, some people really like it. It's a polarizing car, right? Which means they're gonna have some sales at least, but frankly, like I'd say 50, 60% of people are just like, sorry, I don't want something that looks like an origami nightmare. So like I was saying, guys, once they come out with the cyber cab, they're gonna have to get regulatory approval from all kinds of municipalities. Laws need to be changed. Developing a robot taxi business is uh, something that takes a long time. I mean, think about Uber. Even Uber came took a long time to grow it took almost a decade, right, to saturate the market. And so really Tesla have, have not even started with their ride hailing network. And the, the laws need to be changed to make it happen. So 
Um, there's going to be pilot programs, tons of authorities. It's going to take a long time to scale. Um, I mean, I'm just not bullish in the near term, to be honest, on that project uh, yielding earnings um, for the 2030s. Yeah, I'm extremely bullish. Um, do I think my car with full self-driving right now is going to be able to join the Tesla network and do rides for people and make me money? No, I I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, it's a non-zero probability, right? Maybe 10% chance. But if I was to to bet one way or the other, I'd say no, because my car has hardware three, right? So right now they're de developing hardware five. So that's the cameras, the computer, and hardware four and five are much, much more capable than hardware three. So they actually just announced that they're bifurcating development. They're gonna keep developing hardware three, but really it's hardware four that they're focused on and, and making that the one that's able to give people rides extremely reliably. It's not gonna hit pieces of metal on, on the highway or creep in intersections and stop. So, and then they said that hardware five is gonna be even better than hardware four, 10 times better, which, you know, who knows, but it's gonna be to some extent better and more likely to get approved by regulators to actually give people rides with no supervision. So I think that ultimately they're gonna, they're gonna get approved for either hardware four or hardware five, but I don't think my car with hardware three is gonna be uh, making me money so I can make my payments, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, so it's something to think about as a Tesla owner, you know, I might sell my car, to be honest. I might sell my Tesla uh, because it's gonna see a lot of depreciation. It's not gonna be able to be utilized as a robot taxi. And frankly, I want a vehicle where if I have something called full self-driving, it's actually doing all the driving very well and I can look at my phone. That's the main thing. I wanna be able to look away, eat, sleep, go on my phone. That to me is a tremendously valuable, but I don't wanna be babysitting Tesla's software project. Yeah, once again, the cyber cab, you know, we'll see how it looks. I, I'm i gonna be upset if it looks like a retarded origami project because I'm in, you know, Tesla's in the business to accelerate the world to sustainable energy with autonomous electric vehicles. Um, not in the, we're not in the business to tickle Elon's little creative fancy. So uh, the entire valuation of this company is riding on the compact car and the robot taxi. Uh, and it could drive tremendous growth in the market cap you know, over the next decade. We'll see, we'll see. I mean, in 2019, Tesla was around 30 to $40 billion, which is um, when I really went all in on the company. And I predicted it would be worth $500 billion in 2024. It's now 2024 and it's worth $500 billion. So I was right on the money. And earlier this year, I made a prediction that Tesla would be worth $4 trillion in 2029. In the past six months, Six months I've been observing FSD12. I've been looking at the Cybertruck. You can check out my Cybertruck video I just made. They invited me to buy one. I'm not gonna buy one. I go into the reasons why. And um, do I think it could the company could still be worth $4 trillion in 2029? Yes, I do think it's possible. I think a lot of that market cap growth is gonna come in late 2028 and in 2029 once they're getting regulatory approval to run their uh, Tesla network. And ultimately at that point, it just comes down to macroeconomic conditions where interest rates at. Um, but for the 2030s, yes, I'm extremely bullish. I do think they will get widespread approval to have millions of robot taxis giving people rides. Uh, but we cannot predict when that will be. We do not know when um, AI will gain predictability and reliability and functionality and when regulators will choose to approve that in many, many municipalities. Uh, so yeah, investing in, in AI robotics today, which is really the 2020s is all about AI, 2030s is all about AI robotics and Tesla is an AI robotics company. So in my opinion, they're the best in the game in AI robotics. And this is like, investing in electricity in the early 1900s. Tremendous growth in that market. It has tremendous long-term implications. Downstream of electricity was obviously lighting, but also the telegraph, the television, computers, the internet, mobile, and ultimately AI. So that took a hundred years for the 
downstream implications of electricity to manifest economically. And I think it's the same thing with AI and AI robotics. This is, it's a game changer. And it's a platform that many, many things will be built on. One of them is autonomous taxis. Another is humanoid robots. Um, Tesla is building both of those things. So far as I can tell, they're at the forefront um, in AI robotics, right? And so even though I complain about my car, I complain about FSD 12, you know, stopping in intersections, going to going super slow, not dodging potholes and metal. Um, ultimately it is, it's remarkable that it's even where it's at now taking turns. It's doing a lot of, um, very amazing things and they've only been working on it for less than a decade. So, um, it's, it's going to be incredible guys. Um, uh, but I want to tell the truth about full self-driving when I say that you have to pay attention. You can't look at your phone. You're, you're babysitting Tesla software project. So it is what it is. Let me know uh, what you guys think. Um, is it, is it the roads in my area that it's struggling with, or is this everywhere? I imagine it does better um, when it's a simple grid, perhaps. Um, I don't know. I'd be interested to hear from the other uh, Tesla owners because there's a lot of hype online, guys. It's getting better. The new release is so good. It, no interventions. I use it first mile intervention. So, all right. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and have a great rest of your day. Peace, guys. Hey, everybody. It's Chris James. I want to tell you guys about getting health care from Crowd Health. I've been a member of Crowd Health for two years now, and I got to say, I've saved over $10,000. Crowd Health is, is an organization that facilitates the crowdfunding of health care. So they're incentivized to get you the best healthcare and keep you healthy. So it's clearly better than insurance and it's perfect for people who are self-employed, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, families, really anybody. It's a way to get out of the big medical industrial complex, sick care system that as everybody knows, is just getting worse and worse every year. Prices are going up, quality of care is going down. And that's because the misaligned incentives in, ins in the big insurance system. So I tell everybody about crowd health, um, join crowd health. It's the best. Um, I was too, I was skeptical when I was joining, uh, two years ago and I thought this is too good to be true. Um, the price of the membership and the amount of benefits is amazing. So I actually talked to them on the phone for 45 minutes, peppering them with questions. Um, I've been a happy member for two years. I did a podcast interview with the CEO and founder, Andy Schoonover, really good guy. Um, and I can't recommend it enough guys. Join crowd health, check out the link in the description for a fat discount. My discount code is a big win and that's it guys. Join crowd health. So many benefits. Check it out. Amazing. I think it's really important for creating a health system in America that actually keeps us healthy. So join Crowd Health, link in the description. Have a great rest of your day. Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Oh my fucking God. Well, maybe that was a little too hard. It didn't go through, so that's a, that's a plus side. Let's try the right. Try that one, really? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Oh, <laughs> man. It didn't go through. <laughs> so, the room for improvement.